my good friend, Mr. Alden Schaub. More time for Josh, guys. Thanks for having him set this thing up. It's pretty cool. Well, it looks like it's ladies' night here, Brianna. Yeah. A couple of guys. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. yeah. I was thinking to myself, I probably had a pretty similar schedule to you guys, you know. I got up whenever, you know. I was like, oh, what am I going to do today? Oh, nothing really, you know. Just hang out, you know. I was like, oh, man. I didn't get a call from my kids. And I was like, oh, wait. I don't have any kids. <laughs> and I went and took a nap, you know. I was like, oh, it's a pretty good day. So. Yeah, it should be a good time. Is this the first time you guys ever had a comedy in here before? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. Thanks for having us. This should be uh, pretty fun, you know. Thank you, thank you. Uh, well, I got something to tell you guys. Uh, I was uh, trying to order some new polos, you know. And unfortunately, they just sent me a box of collared shirts. Yeah, I don't know. So you know, I had to send them back, try to get a refund. But uh, yeah, the company folded. So. Uh, so, uh, no, well, you guys don't have there. Yeah, it's too bad, guys. I'll probably never get to iron that out, but. <laughs> you guys are silly, that's good. Yeah. Oh, yeah, come on. Talk, talk a little louder. Oh, yeah, get you in the back, no problem. I thought he was just raising the roof back there. Just, yeah, we're having a good time. Well, that's great, guys. Yeah, I'll try to talk a little. I'll try to project. You know. Anyways, uh, yeah, the other day I was going through some of my old things. And I found a bucket list I had written in my 20s. Yeah, I don't know. Looked on there. Yeah, first item on there, it said, uh, become a millionaire by 30. Yeah, I'm only a million 17,000 short. Also, guys, I'm uh, 39, so I'm probably just going to cross that one off. I'm just get rid of that one. Then on there, it said, uh, you know, own your own home. And I was like, <laughs> good one, young Alden. That's probably not going to happen anytime soon. Yeah. Living as a comedian, you know. Then on there, it just said, be thin. And I was like, wow. <laughs> Ship's probably sailed, you know. Cross that one off there, you know. Yeah, and at the bottom there, it said, uh, learn how to speak fluent Japanese. Oh, wow. Uh, I'm like, oh. Baka yoro, you know. You guys probably know what that means. Just cross it off. Just cross it off. You know, so probably not going to happen. Does anybody in here actually speak Japanese? No. no. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> it didn't work out good. Actually, I did have an opportunity to go to Japan in college, you know. And, uh, I got on the bullet train there, and uh, actually I got off on the wrong stop, actually, you know. The train conductor comes up to me, and he goes to check my ticket, and he looks at me, and then he uh, looks at the ticket, and then he just like slaps me across the face, you know. And I was like, well, and, you know, in that moment, I reached a state of Satori, which is like the Zen enlightenment, you know. I realized uh, that I would not be getting a refund. So. <laughs> that was too bad, guys. You know? Yeah, uh, recently I've been uh, tangling with my old adversary, Chase Bank. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They've been charging me $12 a month for my free checking account, you know? Uh, yeah, I asked them, I said, what, what's going on with this here? It said it was a, you know, free checking account. They're like, oh yeah, it used to be, but uh, we changed it. Now it's the Chase Freedom Checking Zone. Yeah, we got the freedom to charge you $12 a month. Uh, yeah, I don't know about that. You know? Like, listen, we just changed the rules, so, you know, We'll, we'll give you back the $12 this month, but next month, you know, you got to pay it. You know, you know. 24, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's always going up. It's always more, you know. But anyways, I've been calling them every month for the last three years. And it's always the same thing. I say, yeah, it's me again. I'd like to have the $12 back. I know this phone call is being recorded, so I'm not going to get off the phone until I get my $12. That's right. I mean business, you know. Listen, I got my phone plugged into the wall. I got nothing to do today. Is this what you want your whole day to be? Just press the button and I get the $12 back. 
you know, it's, usually they come around to my way of thinking, but sometimes, uh, you know, they put you on hold. And that's when I engage in my other hobby. I don't know if you guys realize, but I'm a uh, level seven uh, local guide on Google Maps. Yeah, and I only rate one business. It's uh, Chase Bank Branches. Yeah, so when they put me on hold, I rate additional Chase Bank Branches, all one star. Okay, and it says twelve dollars a month. I don't think so. So yeah, they know what it means. But they keep doing it, you know. So. I don't know if you guys know, you can rate the bank branch and the ATM separately. A lot of people don't even know you can rate the ATMs. Yeah, so there's actually 100 ATMs in Austin that are one star from me, all of them. So yeah, I'm getting them slowly, you know. Well, and they actually relented for a while. They stopped charging me the $12 a month for like six months, thinking I wouldn't notice. And they started up again, you know. So I'm like, what, what now? I started going into the Chase Bank across the street from my apartment and stealing their pens. <laughs> yeah. I figured $12 worth of pens is probably about 300 pens, so it's going to take quite a lot of visits. You know? I don't even have any reason to be in there. That's the problem. You know? I do everything on my phone. You know? so I just walk in there and I check my balance and then I just start stuffing my pockets with pens. And, you know, I hope they get the message. You know, I don't want to pay the $12 a month. This could end yeah. as soon as that goes away, you know, but they just keep doing it, you know. So, yeah, they're catching on to me, though, now. I go across the street. There's only, like, two pens in the whole bank now. So. <laughs> and I'm, I'm getting them, I'll tell you. There's going to be zero in there at some point. Yeah. I tell you guys. Uh, I've been having this real trouble, though. Uh, actually, my mailbox has been broken for, like, six months. My apartment building isn't as nice as this place. They don't get this stuff fixed, you know. I went and talked to the uh, maintenance guy, and uh, he's very busy, you know. He's so busy, he can't fix my mailbox. So, very busy, yeah, very busy guy. Yeah. So, yeah, I actually had to take it up a level of administration to the property management company, you know, and I called him. I said, hey, can you guys fix my mailbox, you know? And she's like, don't raise your voice at me. <laughs> what? Please fix my mailbox. Click. <laughs> yeah, so I don't think that's getting done anytime soon. But my uncle, he says, listen, send him a letter. And, uh, you know, they got 30 days to respond. And I'm like, oh, yeah, well, that's all great. But again, I don't know the status of all that because my mailbox is broken. So uh, it's tough. I was thinking, you know, I was thinking, what would it take for me to actually send out a letter today? You know, most people don't do that anymore. You know, like people can't read cursive, so you know, I'd have to type it, you know. My, my spelling's so bad, you know, and then I don't have a printer, you know, so I gotta go over to the public library and give them like, get some quarters, you know, and get that printed off there, you know. And then I gotta go to HEB and get an envelope, but you know, they come in packs of 30, so there's, you know, wasting 29 envelopes, you know. And, and then there's the stamps. Exactly. How much are stamps these days, you know? Twelve dollars, probably. I don't know. Uh, it's a whole thing, you know. And then, then I gotta go over to Yankee Candle and get a candle so I can seal the envelope, okay? You know? Yeah, and then just push that in the envelope, you know. Push that in the mailbox. Couldn't be easier, guys, you know. Yeah, and then I'll call my friend and I'll be like, "Did you get my letter?" And he's like, "Well, no, we moved," you know. I'm like, oh. Yeah. Return to sender. I'll never see that letter again. Because again, my mailbox is broken, guys. You know, it's just, you know, it's not, I shouldn't dwell on it. You know, I, I got other things going on for me. You know, actually, you wouldn't believe this. I am one of the comedians in the area with the highest credit score of all. I have 790 credit score. So, for comedians, that's like amazing. That's like I'm a unicorn. You know. So, uh, you know, my bank said, "Hey, you actually qualify for a zero interest credit card." You know. Well, I didn't know my credit was that good, you know, yeah, yeah, so yeah, I filled out the form and I got, you know, approved and I never did get that credit card again. My mailbox is broken, guys, so it's like, oh, just, I can't take advantage of my fantastic credit, you know, anyway, I, I shouldn't dwell on it, guys, you know. Actually, one of my comedy shows, uh, I actually asked to get sponsored by this uh, barbershop company called Bird's Barbershop. 
Yeah, and I went in there and here was my pitch. I said, listen, I got a wide demographic of people with hair. They're like, great. I'm like, wait, there's more. I'll put a bird on the poster. What do you think? Like, all right, that all sounds good. What do you want? I said, well, maybe you give us like 10 free haircuts a month. And, uh, you know, that'll be like the sponsor, you know. And they go, okay, great. Just give us your address and we'll mail those right up to you. <laughs> yeah, I can't tell them I don't have a mailbox, you know. I think this thing's a scam, you know. Yeah, I, had, I actually had to drive to the barbershop, you know. Like, uh, yeah. yeah, I shouldn't tell them. Though, you know, I, just, I tell you, and, uh, you know, I did the 23andMe recently, you know. Figure out my ancestry there. Yeah, I figured, uh, I found out I was related to my mom. Yeah, and my dad, it's crazy, you know. I was hoping I was related to the mailman so he could fix my mailbox, but uh, it was just, uh, it's just not going my way, you know. Okay, dude, guys. Anyway. No, I tell you, I've been having other troubles, though, you know. Like, uh, recently, uh, I was looking at my tire, and there was a screw in my tire, and I was like, oh, ooh, that's not good, you know. Got to go over to Discount Tire and get a new one, you know. So I go to the guy and I say, hey, uh, you know, my tire's got a screw in it there. He goes, all right, let's uh, take a look at the tire and see if that's the problem. <laughs> well, uh, you know, not a tire professional, but, uh, you know, I have a hypothesis, but, uh, you know, I let you do your job there, you know. And so, uh, he gets his tool out, which is like the spray bottle you might use to discipline your cat, okay? And he sprayed the hole, and uh, it started bubbling, you know, and he goes, Yeah, it's the screw. <laughs> Great. Glad we're on the same page with all that, you know. He's like, all right, well, uh, what kind of tire would you like? You know, I, think, I don't know. Something that fits on the car would be good. Uh, I'm like, well, what's this going to cost, you know? Like, oh, well, we got this one for 70 and we got this one 130 you know. I'm like, okay, well. What's the difference? You know, he's like, ah, oh, well, I'm paid on commission, so I like the 131, you know. Ah, just get something on there, you know. Like, how long is this going to take? He's like, oh, about an hour, you know. Like, well, if it took two hours, it'd be cheaper. <laughs> he looked a little tired after that. But, anyway. but then he hits me with his pitch, and he goes, listen, do you want tire insurance? Oh, yeah. mm, you know, listen, 15 more. If this ever happens again, we'll replace it for nothing, you know? I was like, oh, all right. Would be nice to have some part of the car insured. <laughs> you know, I don't have car insurance, I don't have health insurance, but now I have this tire insurance, so, you know. <laughs> Not all the tires, though, you know, just the new ones, so, you know. <laughs> I get in an accident, you know, it's all covered as long as it hit the passenger front tire, so, you know, it should, should be good there, you know. Yeah, it's all working out pretty good. I was able to drive all the way here. It worked out. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what I do when I'm not doing stand-up comedy is uh, I'm a professional trivia host. So, uh, yeah, I'm very popular in two bars. So, yeah, and, uh, you know, I'm, not, I'm actually the CEO of Unknown Trivia. So, yeah, I, I get to write all the questions, which is pretty fun. And uh, people think that that's pretty easy nowadays because, uh, you know, the Internet exists, you know. Uh, it's actually very difficult because online, nobody can reach a consensus about anything. Yeah, and, and you know, you do have to reach a consensus in trivia or else, you know. So, again, I spent a couple hours trying to determine whether it's okay to put metal in the microwave. I think that's pretty obvious, right? Not online. People are like, don't ever do that. That'll start a fire, you know. And so he's like, I don't know, maybe. How thick's the tinfoil? And I was like, that's not good. You know? So yeah, I had to throw that one out because you do have to reach a consensus. Because what people will do is if they don't agree with you at trivia, they'll pull their phones out, which is illegal at trivia, first of all, okay? and they'll go up to you and they'll be like, what about this? And then I'll look and I'll be like, you wrote that. Doesn't mean anything, you know? Like, uh, it's tough. You know? Yeah. I found out through my research that uh, bees do not have knees. Yeah, true guys, it's true. I had a very contentious trivia question of uh, whether or not raccoons have thumbs or not. 
okay? And I'll tell you right now, they do not. People don't believe me, but like imagine, instead of having a thumb like we do, they have another pinky, you know? They got five digits is what it is, you know? And as I said this one, someone did not agree with me. And he's like, no, no, that's not true. Blah, blah, blah. And he pulls up a picture on his phone, getting illegal trivia, and it's Rocket from the Guardians of the Galaxy, okay? <laughs> And he's firing a laser, you know, and I was like, that's a fictional raccoon-human hybrid. That doesn't mean anything. Oh, yeah. We had to go to the Austin Zoo to get that all sorted out. Uh, yeah, it's too bad, but... Well, I'm going to do one more for you guys, and I'll bring up your next comedian here. Uh, i got to tell you guys, uh, you know, I've been trying to lose some weight, you know, so, uh, you know, I started doing the keto diet. Yeah, I didn't realize I was doing a different version of that for years. It was, uh, keep eating till obesity. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, on the keto diet, what you got to do is you got to eat a lot of butter, okay? It's a big part. So every week I go to HEB and I get four sticks of the salted butter from the hill country, you know? It's like three seventy nine, dollars pretty good deal. You know? Anyways, I go in there and uh, they're having these shortages. They didn't have it. You know, all they had was the unsalted butter. And I was like, wow, I don't know about all that. Then I got thinking about it, and I was like, you know what? It's actually a better deal. There's no salt in it. That means I'm getting more butter. I got salt at home. All right, this is great. You know, I mean, yeah, so I get the four sticks of the unsalted butter, and I take that home, cooked it up with my lentils, and it turns out it's pretty good. You know, I'm, I'm an unsalted butter man. I had no idea. You know? So now I know what to get. You know, four sticks of the unsalted butter from the Hill Country, again, 379 even a better deal. Again, I got salt at home, you know what I mean? Uh, I go in there, guess what, this week, they don't have it. No. Yeah, all they got is the salted butter. <laughs> oh, and I hate that now. I'm like, oh, ugh. So, hey, bring out the manager, you know? And uh, we got into a little discussion, and uh, it got a little heated. And yeah, I almost assaulted them. <laughs> <laughs> the perfect way to end a segment. It's the best grown of the night. Well, thank you very much. I've been on shove. Are you guys ready for your next comedian? Put your hands together for Josh Castro. All right.